velvet curtain and blue linen curtains fastened with cords of fine linen. Hallelujah. Esther, verse chapter 8, verse 15. So Mordecai went out from the presence of the king in royal apparel of blue and white with a crown of gold. Hallelujah. I'm going to quote the scriptures first and then we're going to try and dissect some of it to get the revelation for today. Job 6.6 6 says, Is there any taste in the white of an egg? Job 41 verse 32 says, One who think the deep had white hair. Hallelujah. Psalm 51 verse 7 says, Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Praise God. Hallelujah. And then we said Psalm 68 14, When the Almighty scattered kings in it, it was white as snow in Zaman. Ecclesiastes 9 8, let your garments always be white. Let your garments be white. Remember that your garment must be white. It is a requirement of the Lord. Song of Solomon 5 verse 10, my beloved is white and ruddy. Isaiah 1 verse 18, they shall be white, though your sins are like scarlet. They shall be white as snow. Glory to God. Lamentations 4, 7. Her Nazarites were brighter than snow and whiter than milk. Glory to God. Ezekiel 27, 18 tells us, Damascus was your merchant because of the abundance of goods. And among the goods, it is mentioned white wool. Glory to God. Daniel 7, verse 8. The vision of the Ancient of Days. Daniel says, I watched till thrones were put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, his, his heels a burning fire. Daniel eleven thirty seven. 35, and some of those of understanding shall fall to refine them, purify them, and make them white. Glory to God. Daniel 12, verse 10, many shall be purified and made white and refined. Glory to God. So we see that even the ancient of days was seated in a garment of white. The Bible tells us that God Almighty is wearing a garment of white. White is the color of divine elevation, of the divine being who has created and made all beings. Glory to God. There's got to be a reason for him choosing to be dressed in white. We see further on that we are talking that white talks about purifying, refining, hallelujah. As we go further, Joel 1 verse 7 says, He had laid waste my vine, ruined my fig tree, he has stripped it bare and threw it away, his branches are made white. Here it tells us that white can also be something negative. I was skipping the book of Leviticus, many places in the book of Leviticus, when we talk about white, they are talking about the skin that has turned white from leprosy. Hallelujah. This is just a foretaste of our message. Zechariah 1.8 tells us, I saw by night and behold a man riding on a red horse and it stood among the myrtle trees in the hollow and behind him were horses, red, sorrel, and white. Glory to Jesus. Zechariah 6.3 with the third chariot, white horses. Glory to God. Verse 6. The whites are going after them. Matthew 5, 36. Nor shall you swear by your head because you cannot make one hair white or black. Matthew 17, 2 tells us. And Jesus was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun and his clothes became as white as the light. Matthew 23, 27 tells us, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you are like whitewashed tombs, which indeed appear beautiful outwardly, but inside are full of dead men's bones and all uncleanness. Glory to God. We are looking at Matthew 28, verse 3. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white 
as snow. Mark 9, 3, his clothes became shining, exceedingly white like snow, such as no launderer on earth can whiten them. Mark 16, 5, entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe. Luke 9, 29, as he prayed, the appearance of his face was altered and his robe became white and glistening. Are you getting that? Hallelujah. Job 4, 27 talks about the whitened harvest. When the harvest is ripe, at this point, his disciples came and they marveled that he talked with a woman, yet no one said, what do you seek? And Jesus told them that the harvest is ripe, is whitened, glory to God. John 4, verse 35, do you not say there are still four months and then comes the harvest? Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are already white for harvest. John 20, verse 12, and she saw. Mary, two angels in white, sitting one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had laid. And Acts 1.10, And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. Acts 2, 23 verse 3. Then Paul said to him, God will strike you, you whitewashed wall. Revelation 1.14, his head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow. Revelation 2.17, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. And I will give him a white stone. I will give him a white stone. And on the stone, a new name written, which no one knows except him who receives it. Revelation 3, 4. You have a few names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Revelation 3, 5. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life. Re Revelation 3.18 I counsel you to buy from me gold refined in the fire that you may be rich and white garment that you may be clothed that the shame of your nakedness may not be revealed. Revelation 4.4 4. Around the throne were 24 thrones and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes. Revelation 6, 2, and I looked and behold a white horse and he who sat on it had a bow and a crown was given to him and he went out conquering and to conquer. Revelation 6, 11, then a white robe was given to each of them and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were was completed. Revelation 7, 9. After these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number of all nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes with palm branches in their hands. Revelation 7, 13, then one of the elders answered, saying to me, Who are those, these arrayed in white robes? And where did they come from? And I said to him, verse 14, Sir, you know, he said, These are the ones who come out of the great tribulation and washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 14, 14, then I looked and behold, a white cloud, and on the cloud sat one like the Son of Man, having on the head, on his head, a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. Revelations nineteen eleven. Christ on a white horse. Now I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. Verse fourteen. And the armies in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Chapter 20, verse 11, Revelation, the great white throne judgment. 
Then I saw a great white throne, and he was sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. Father God, as we are preparing to uh, receive the word from this message, Lord, open the eyes of our understanding and open the eyes of our heart and open the inner ear to receive the revelation in your word. I know the vessel, Lord, let it be more of you and not of me. Take more of me and give me more of you. More of your grace, more of your anointing, more of your power, more of your authority, more of your wisdom to share this word and break the word in two. Break the bread in two and feed the flock. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Are you blessed this morning, this afternoon? Yes, yes, I believe you are. So as we are looking in the scriptures, I think we have received uh, a, a lot is being said in the scriptures. So I pray that the Lord will give the grace to share some of the highlights that we have through the scriptures. Um, I will first go through some of the notes I retain. White in the Bible represents purity, righteousness, and God's love. Hallelujah. God's love. Let's, let's look at purity. What does purity represent in the Bible? Um, uh, clean? Yes. The color white is the presence for all the light in the visible spectrum. When it enters our eyes, it stimulates all of our cone cells that God made light sensitive. Snow and clouds appear white because almost all of the light from the sun is reflected by water, either frozen or liquid, with only a small amount of the visible spectrum absorbed. You see, white contains all the colors of the world. It's all the colors in one, the light of God, through all the colors, makes it look white. So white is actually the combination of all colors. When we think of white, then why is God only wearing white? The Bible, we just read that even God in heaven is dressed in white. Because white is not that he, he, he despised the other colors, but it represents all the colors combined, all the good qualities. Hallelujah. The Bible talks about the fruit of the spirit. All the fruits of the world, when you mix all those colors together, it makes one with the light of God. When the light of God penetrates all the colors, they all together, they become white. Hallelujah. So, praise Jesus, praise Jesus. In the King James Version, the word white occurs 75 times. It is the most frequently mentioned color in the Bible. And uh, the one of the things that we notice about, about white, it has to do with purity and the redemption of sin. We read it in Psalm 51. Though your sins may be red and scarlet, but the Lord can turn your sins to be white as snow. We read in Revelations that they made their robes to be white, in the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus is peculiar. It is the red blood of Jesus that makes our clothes to be white. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So white has to do with purification. God is coming for a bride that is dressed in white. The reason that Jesus has not come back here, people are wondering why is God taking long, is because the bride, the church, the body of Christ is not ready for the coming of her Messiah. So God is waiting and he has prepared preachers, messengers like myself and others to speak the word and to equip the church that the church may be cleansed from the unworthiness, the unrighteousness, the sin that clings so easily. So through the word of God, by prayer, the blood of Jesus can make you white again. You are a Christian. You've been a Christian for a long time. But many in our midst, although Christians, we still have the stain of sin on our robe. 
The white robe has been stained by sin. And God is mentioning through that color of white that he wants us to be ready. He wants us to carry the light of God. He wants us to carry the purity. Because in heaven, nothing dirty, nothing stained can enter. It is a perfect place. And everything must be immaculate white. Hallelujah. Praise God. So he tells us, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. It is compared to snow. It is compared to wool. And the Bible says that even God in heaven is dressed in white and his hair are, are like the color of wool. And the wool is mentioned in the Old Testament as being white as well. So purity is one of the quality from God. God's judgment on the white throne has to do with victory. We saw that the the angel that carried white that that were that, that, that was mounting a white horse went to conquer the nation. White is the color of victory. Hallelujah. When you are victorious, the Bible says that the martyrs, those who would overcome in the tribulation, who will stand for Christ and go through tribulation, through persecution, and still die for the Lord, be, for the name of God, or for the sake of the name of Jesus, that the Bible says that they will be dressed in white, the color of victory. Hallelujah. So you want to be wearing the color white more often. If you feel down, you especially on days that you feel that you are defeated, you have messed up, you have failed, it is the time to begin to wear white as a testimony of your faith. Because sometimes you say, I believe that I'm healed. I believe that I'm saved. I have victory over this problem. But you see an act of faith can be a prophetic action. When you begin to wear white with understanding, it can boost your, your understanding. It can boost your faith. You begin to wear it to say, no, I'm not going to be down. I might have lost something here, but I know that I'm wearing white. I am victorious. It is a reminder that you are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. You have the victory through Jesus Christ. So white represents victory over the powers of evil, over temptation of sin. Glory to God. And then he's telling us that purify me with high soap, I shall be clean. Wash me, I shall be whiter than snow. White represents the color of purification. When you've been purified, when you've been refined, God is removing the imperfections in you. The, um, the, in a, the weaknesses are swallowed by the purity of God. God, the fire of God purifies you from your impurities, from your weaknesses, from your bad habits. White is an important color. It has meaning in Jesus' name. We know that in the Bible, uh, purity uh, 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 can be seen in things that are good. White represents purity because it represents things that are good, things that are innocent, things that are honest, cleanliness. It has to do with clean, being clean. God wants a people that are clean. Sin makes you dirty. Lying makes you dirty. Fornication, cheating makes you dirty. And there is nothing dirty that can enter heaven. Hallelujah. People say, but how can, can God, God can be so mean to allow people to go to hell? Why would God not allow everyone to go to heaven? Because if you are dirty, you enter heaven, you will make the place dirty. And uncomfortable for everybody else. It is not that God does not want you to come to heaven. But your dirtiness, your uncleanness will keep you from entering. The place is so holy that when you want to enter, you will be repelled automatically. The cleanness of God will keep you out, will push you away. You cannot force your way to heaven. You have to be clean. And that cleanliness happens once you, when you are still on the earth. 
White represents righteousness, hallelujah. It represents righteousness. The Bible talks about thrones in heaven. It says that uh, there are 24 elders and they wear white and they have a crown. Jesus wears white and has a crown. He has to be with royalty, with victory, with reigning, with ruling in righteousness. If you are righteous, you will reign and rule with Christ, hallelujah. You will reign and rule in majesty with God Almighty. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We know that the purity of color, fully light, without stain, without stain. Righteousness means that there is no stain on you. Glory to God. You are free from stains. You are delivered from stains. It has to do with the holiness too. The holiness, the dedication to God. You are completely concentrated, focused on God. When people come to Christ, they put, they go for baptism. Sometimes they wear white robes to say that now they are committing, surrendering to follow Christ wholeheartedly. No more halfway, but they are fully committed to Christ. They're separating themselves from the world to follow Christ and walk in holiness. It has to do with wisdom. The color white also has to do with the wisdom of God. Let's check that out. The scripture says that his hair where it was white like wool. We know that all the people are always represented by uh, the, when you grow older, you age, your hair begins to turn white. It's a sign of wisdom. Hallelujah. Wisdom. If you lack wisdom, you begin to pray wisdom, you can begin to wear white, to believe that as I wear white, I am an elder in the things of God. I begin to believe what I'm saying in the name of Jesus. I ought to be wearing white today, praise God. Before the end of this session, I will be Wearing white that you may see what it represents. Glory to God. Ah, hallelujah. What else do I want to share on that for today? Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. Ah, praise God. I wanted to talk about... Uh, what the dictionary says about the white flag. A white flag or cloth used as a symbol of surrender, truth, or a desire to parley. I believe that a white flag, yes, it has to do with surrendering. And as you come to Christ, the white means that you surrender to the Lordship of Jesus Christ too. Praise God. We have... Um, Let's go back to the scriptures we were reading today. That as you are wearing white, you are declaring that you belong to that nation of Christ. We are a different species, a different race. That is why the Bible says that there was a countless number of people in heaven, a countless number of all the people that will end up in heaven. There will be a great nation, and they are all wearing white, the color of victory. As one nation, it is a color of unity, a color of one race, one species. We are the citizens of heaven, people that belong to the kingdom. Hallelujah. We have been saved in victory. Glory to Jesus. And as we are concluding on that message for today, um, I want to tell you, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, this is a time that you can begin to wear white. You can begin to wear white spiritually. You can begin to receive the color of victory. Hallelujah. God wants you ready for the kingdom. And that is, he can wash your sins. Though your sins may be red as scarlet, even black as charcoal, God can make you clean again. It doesn't matter what you did. Did you murder someone? Did you divorce three times? Did you abort a child? No matter what you've done, you might even have committed a rape. You might even, whatever you have committed, the Lord says that there is hope for you. It doesn't matter what you have done. God is ready. The blood of Jesus can turn that black sin and make you white. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter how black, how red. Don't run away from God. Run to God. So if you have that desire right now, I want to urge you, to invite you, to plead you. Come and surrender to the king. Come and let you be ready. Come and put on that garment of white, that garment of righteousness. 
of forgiveness. What represents the forgiveness that has been granted? You are forgiven. You are accepted. God will not look at your sins. He says, as the far as the east is from the west, God will separate you from your sins. He forgets your sins and throw them in the sea of forgetfulness as if they never existed. He looks at you as his child, full of victory. So say after me, Lord Jesus, forgive me for my sins. Wash me in your precious blood. Make me white as snow. Write my name in the book of life, creating me a clean heart. Restore a right spirit within me and fill me with your precious Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. I'll forgive everyone that ever offended me. I will greet them happily if I ever meet them again because my heart is the contact point for the Holy Spirit. And now you're going to say, defeat and failure are things of the past in my life because you deliver me and all of my loved ones from all generational curses and demonic strongholds that kept us captive with the right hand of God. My past is over. A new and beautiful chapter is started. It is a new dawn. Praise God. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. If you have said that prayer, friends, I believe that you are now a born again child of God. You are delivered. You are forgiven. Do not allow anybody to remind you of your past. You are forgiven. You are brand new. You might have messed up your life with different relationships, different lovers, but today you are brand new. God is making you a virgin again. You are innocent. You are purified. You are refined. Yes, the color white. You can wear that gown, that wedding gown of white on your wedding day because God has made you pure again. He has made you holy. He has restored you. Praise God. He has made you brand new. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And we are going to go into a time of prayer, into a time of worship, into a time of healing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get ready, get ready, get ready. We praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. And now we want to pray, we want to, uh, as I'm wearing my gown, my white gown of victory, I'm declaring victory in your life. Victory over sickness, victory over death, premature death be broken in the name of Jesus. Anything the enemy had planned for you to fail, but you will succeed. You will succeed in your life in the name of Jesus. You will succeed in your marriage, you will succeed in everything that God had created you to do. You will accomplish and fulfill the purposes of God for your life. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive that healing. We command that cancer to be removed and gone from your body. Be healed from that cancer. Be healed from diabetes, from hypertension. Be healed from, blood, uh, be healed from high blood pressure. Be healed in the name of Jesus from COVID-19. We declare healing over your body. In your brain be healed. Your body, victory over every sickness. Victory over every curse be broken. Every family curses be broken, be broken, be broken. In Jesus' mighty name, glory to God. Hallelujah. You are healed, you are healed. We declare, declare your healing is here. In Jesus' mighty name. Your healing is here. Praise God, praise God. Yes. Your healing is here in Jesus' name. You are healed for the salvation of your souls. Remember to make God's words a standard for your life. Never a sickness Jesus cannot heal. Never a disease Jesus cannot cure. Praise God. Good Christians are good citizens. So if you don't believe in God with medicines, how can you believe it without medicine? But I want to let you know that your healing, it is not all up to God no, certainly is it all up to you. It takes God's power and our genuine willingness and to be released. So I decree, be released and begin to function. May every part of, of, of your body now begin to function. I see chains falling in Jesus' name. You are healed. You are healed. 
You are delivered. You are delivered in Jesus' mighty name. And for those of you who desire to send on your offering, your tithe to the ministry, you can do it by logging on to, going to www.morphine.org. Praise God. God bless you. God carry you in all that I that you do in Jesus' name. And our declaration as we close is the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I shall live, I shall not die. I shall live to declare the glory of the Lord, to declare the works of the Lord, to declare the counsel of the Lord in the land of the living in this year, 2020 and seven, seven years to come. Amen. Peace. Remember, we are prophetic. We are apostolic in Jesus' name. This is the voice, the doulos, the slave of the Lord.